see you on YouTube in the morning. Hey. This is Pat uh, Robinson. I think we all know this lady. Anyway, thank you and welcome. Well, it don't matter. Whichever one makes me say I'm the best. <laughs> That's how much of a ham I am. I want the best. <laughs> how y'all doing this evening? All right. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to start this out with a little prayer. Dear God, I'm grateful for life and for being who I am, being strong enough to try to get where I need to be. God, I thank you for another year of hopefulness, for being able to reach to those who feel for a second they can't reach themselves. I thank you for allowing me to see the exterior into their interior, to see who they and we are. I know I can't change anyone, but I can shine bright for them and into them as others did for me. I thank you, God, for the soldiers who died on the battlefield, for the sinful people like me. And I ask that as these guys listen to this prayer and what I am grateful for, they can be and see what life can be being sober and free. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know what week this is, don't you? Veterans Day. You know I wasn't going to forget it. I wanted to be in the Army so bad. I did. Me and my sister and four other girls went down at the same time to get in, and they rejected me. But I wanted to be in the service so bad. And like I said, I was rejected. But I wrote this piece. It's called Veterans of Foreign Wars. It's a love for this country to support our women and men in the military. It's just what should be to make sure our soldiers are supported in each community. And it's for the young as well as the old to come together and help our ailing soldiers feel whole, whole in their need to be a part of this VFW community, a part of the protection of this world, because they were our way to freedom within their own emotional swirl. As they step forward to fight, make us feel safe as we slept at night. This is why young soldiers have to understand there should always be a VFW for our fighting women and men, a place to share with others, a safe place to share with our regimental brothers, a place to share your stories and feel safe and strong within the VFW community, a place to salute your hand and always feel you were a proud, strong man. See, in order for the VFW to always be there, the young soldiers have to care. The young soldiers need to step up today to ensure the ailing, the suffering, will have a place and a way, a way to get help when need be. And those area VFWs are for all soldiers to feel safe and free. I know it seems it's always about the old, but one day you will be an elder and need to feel whole. Because as we get older, we have forgotten and pushed away. In those moments with another soldier is how many soldiers live each day, going for lunches at the post, always someone to serve you, be your host, someone to wait on you, make you feel like a man, someone who shares with you and understands. And without the VFW, it will fade away. And when you need it, it won't be there someday. And it will be only because we didn't show our love and another soldier who might need a hug. In 10 years, there won't be a place to share. If the young soldiers doesn't, if the young soldiers doesn't start to care, there won't be a place to share with others and visit and meet your military sisters and brothers. 
There won't be a place to share a story if we don't support the VFW community or a place to salute your fellow man, a place to pray for America hand in hand. If we don't start to support our soldiers coming home, we will grow empty and alone. I say we need to make sure that all doors are open to the veterans of foreign wars. As you know, most of y'all know I'm a recovering addict. Uh, and I'm proud to be a recovering addict because now, like it used to be, I was yearning to be one. Now that I am one, others come to me to get help for what's ailing them. And I got this one girl now. I still got my dark hair. But she about to drive me crazy. You hear what I'm telling you? Every morning I wake up and I look in the mirror. Have I changed any? Do I look any different? Because this girl is about to take me through it. Believe me, I, three times I didn't wanted to say that's enough. I mean, this, this can't be all it's about worrying about somebody else because worrying is a sin. And I try to say I never worry, and that's a lie. I'm sinning again. Because once I get in the trenches with these people, it's just a fight for my life again. I'm going to AA meetings. I ain't been to an AA meeting in five years. And they trying to tell me how to live over again. And I'm trying to tell them that it wasn't AA that brought me through. It was God. It wasn't AA. Amen. I had never been to an AA meeting when I went to prison. But they brought two little ladies in there that said that they was from AA. I never read the book. I never did 12 steps. I never did none of that until lately I did it. But God brought me through what I was going through after 31 years of addiction. And a lot of people, they say that I shouldn't be here today. Yes, I should be. Yes, I should be. For a while there, they had me believing the same thing until the pastor told me one day when I said to him, I wonder why I stayed out there 31 years. He said, because it wasn't time for you to come in yet. And 31 years seemed like a long time. But when you get it through your head that everything that you learned, everything that you went through was a learning experience for you to do what you do right now, 30 years is like a day. It really is. It's like a day. And I wrote this piece, of course y'all know I'm a poet and a storyteller, and I wrote this piece in jail, and it, it thanks, I know some of y'all have heard it before, it thanks people like y'all that are sitting out here. I don't believe I'd still be sober today if it wasn't for y'all people out here. A little girl asked me today if I loved her. I told her I love her because God said I love her. But I don't have to like her. <laughs> don't have to like her. Ain't that what I told you? I ain't got to like you, but I like you. I was just trying. I've been knowing her since she was a baby. But I, I know. I, I wrote this piece because I was, I was in prison. And I was in there with killers and all this kind of stuff. Susan Smith and all of them. And I wanted to say thank you to these people. I did. My family thought I was crazy. But I don't think that if they had to put me in any other part of that jail with them youngsters in there where I could roust about and rule, I wouldn't have got it. They put me in there with hardened murderers. I mean, people, when I first went in there, oh my Lord, what's up with them? I mean, these people, my roommate had killed three people. You know why she killed three people? Because they didn't get up to take her shoplifting on Christmas morning. She said she was knocking at the door. They had been up all night long and they wouldn't get up. So she went in there and she said, I count the three. And if you don't get up, I'm shooting all of you. And they thought she was jiving. She counted the three and blew all three of them away. Of course, she had to tell me that story as soon as I came in the room, you know what I'm saying? They use that to get leverage over you to make you scared of them. Well, she had me scared for a couple of days, you know? I went in the bathroom <clears throat> and I said to myself, look, you wasn't scared of nothing on that street. Y'all know it, y'all know me. I wasn't scared of nothing, honey. 
So why am I going to come in jail and be scared? So I walked back in that room one day and I told my sister, let me tell you something. She didn't know how much time I had. I say, and this ain't my idea. They put me here. If it hadn't been up to me, I wouldn't have came. And I'm sure it's, that's the same result for you. I say, but we're going to have to get along in this room. She didn't even want me to walk hard in the room. There's a concrete floor. How hard can you walk on the concrete floor? I said, good gracious of life. And so we, we got along. Now this girl, she was on so much medication till it took her three minutes to turn over to say something to me. But she was going to beat my behind if I made any noise. But at the time, I didn't know no difference, you know. She was on so much medication. And after I got to know her, I asked her, I said, what's, what's up? Why you on all that medication? You fighting? You doing anything wrong? I mean, what is it? Oh, I ain't never had a fight since I've been in here, she said. <laughs> but that was the way they controlled them. You know, they, I guess because of their charges and things, they kept them like that. And there was a lot of them like that. And God came to me and he was telling me all kind of things and they were telling me all kind of things. And I was doing all kind of things with my family. I brought the Cancer Society in there. And to get back at me, the warden put me the first one on the list. That made me so mad, it really did. I'm the first one on the list. Wasn't nothing wrong with me, but when I went in there, it was girls in there that had lumps in their breast, big as mine, right here. And when, at night, when they had on their t-shirts and took off their regular clothes, you know, you can walk around like that in the dorms. You can see those lumps in their breasts. And so they started coming to me individually. And uh, I wrote my sister, and she asked me which, what I wanted to do. And the people started getting kind of leery of me. So an officer came to me, and she said, what is it you want me to do for you? I thought she was crazy. I thought she was hitting on me, to tell you the truth. I really did. I thought she was, you know, homosexual. I thought that's what she was doing. But she wasn't. She wanted to help these girls just as bad as I did. And she would take that mail out for me and bring it back. She did a lot of things I wouldn't even say on this microphone because I'm filming somebody right here. And of course I ain't gonna mention her name. But that's how I got to who I am today. By helping those people in there. It was one young lady. Anybody in here remember Pee Wee Gaskins? He killed all those people. Yeah. Well, his co-defendant was in there. And she just soon to use the N-word as to say hi to you. And they was whipping her butt daily. You hear what I'm telling you? I mean, she had never killed nobody. She was just his roommate. But she was there. And uh, she came to me one day and she asked me, I'm telling you these stories so you'll know why I'm as strong as I am today. And she asked me, she says, I've been here 36 years. She said, and I go up for parole like every two years and I have never had a letter back from the parole. So I went back to my, my uh, dorm and I thought about it for a while and the next time I saw I said, look, what do you be writing to them people anyway? So she brought me a couple of her letters. See, what she was doing wrong is, you don't write a parole board and tell them what to do. You ask them. They getting ready to do you a favor, letting you out after 30 some years. So I got her papers and I read some of her papers and I wrote the letter and uh, she sent it out. About four weeks later, she came and said, oh my God, I got, a letter. I got an answer back, I got an answer back. And the other girls by that time knew I had wrote for this lady who was definitely a person who did not like black people. But see, that don't make no difference to me. I don't see color like that. You know, my grandmother, great grandmother was a slave, and she said if she can deal with them, what, what do we have to do? We wasn't no slaves. So she read the letter to me. They considered her. She didn't get out that year. I got out about two years later. I was sitting at home one day, and the phone rang, and it was a people from the parole board. And they asked me, they said, would you like for your letter to still be in her parole paper? 
Have you changed any way that you felt from when you were in there until now? And I told them no, just like that. She got out after 36 years. I mean, God is powerful, honey. He is powerful. I found out when God want to use you, it don't matter where you at. He used you. He put you in a powerful way, a powerful position. And I had to write this poem as I sat there in my room. They used to wait every day for me to finish whatever I was writing. Sometimes I'd write, I'd write five and six at a time, and they would sit out there. As soon as I'd walk out there, would you write this time? And I wrote this one. I'm sure some of y'all didn't heard it before. I thank you, society, for saving me. I was walking a narrow path out of control with a monkey on my back as I let the devil steal my soul. Strung out so far, I didn't know what to do. Weak in the knees, not enough strength to even carry me through. The only time I fought the devil was when I was totally out of my head. Because when I wasn't, I wished I was dead. My life went on like that for more than 30 years. When I was high, laughed, sick, I found myself in tears. I was blind because I wouldn't let me see. And can you believe society came to save me? Society came and locked me up in jail. I sat there alone on a steel bed in a cold cell where I recalled everything in my life I'd ever done. As I sat there sick alone, there was no one. I was blind because I wouldn't let me see. And can you believe society came to save me? I was sentenced to three years that dreary September day as they handcuffed me. I realized prison might be the only way. So I settled down to see what sobriety would bring. And it brought me joy and happiness and so many other things. And today I'm not blind because I finally allowed me to see. And I thank you, society, for saving me. stories I can tell. I'm trying to write another book now with just short stories in it. I don't know how much time I got. But there are angels in jail. I mean, plenty of them in there. When you walk through that door the first day, we all got the same opportunity, the same one. We can either be good or we can be bad. And I walk through that door and I, I embrace good. And there are angels in there, honey. It was a girl in there by the name of Lisa. And she wouldn't talk to nobody. But when God wants you to talk to his angels, whoo, I didn't understand it then. I didn't. But I understand it now. This girl who would not talk to nobody else, when she sat down beside me that day, which she never did that either, the whole prison stood still. Because they wanted to know, she ain't never did that before. She's been in three years already. And she sat down and she told me, she said, Pat, I'm going to let you walk with me. I said, are you out of your mind? That's what I told her. Because when she walked around that circle, it was like a, 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 a gazelle going fast. I'm half dead, baby. <laughs> Them drugs and ravished my body so bad, I was half dead when I first came in there. No, she said, no. She said, I'm going to slow down and walk with you every day. And every day we walk together. And she, through her, showed me. And some of the things she told me, I would not have believed them being her. But she, it don't matter. We all go through the same thing. We might just have a different cover to go through them. We might be black, we might be white, Chinese, or whatever color it is. But we all going through the same thing. And she made me understand that. You would not believe what she looked like. She was gorgeous. She didn't look like she was blown in the jail. Of course, when she finished telling me about herself, she belonged right where she was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wasn't no mistake about that. But just to look at her, they say you can't tell a book by its cover. And that, that was true. That was true. That was true. So I guess that's uh, about all I got to say. That's all I brought with me, unless you want to hear another poem, and I'll do that. Y'all want to hear another poem? Yeah. Yeah. This one is, this is 
last one. I'm supposed to be here. Today I walk with joy and cheer, celebrating life because God says, I'm supposed to be here. I walked this world before, even alone in a crowd. Today as I walk, my presence screams out loud. My yesterdays are safely tucked away, and the things I do this moment is how I live each day.